Life Audio. I've observed a strange and unbiblical obsession with those in worship music, particularly among mega churches or large worship movements and personalities, which are more often known for their style of their music than their heart for the poor, the needy, and the outsider. And these so-called movements rely heavily on the music to carry their brand as they seek wider influence and as such greater wealth and prestige. This is troubling. The gospel is not supposed to be glamorous. Welcome to a very special edition of The Walk Podcast, where we delve into a devotional by one of our frequent contributors and our very good friend, Darren Mulligan, of the band We Are Messengers. Darren has a unique perspective on worship and its role in the Christian music scene and within the context of the church. Some of his concerns about the current culture found in many churches regarding worship leaders bring a level of correction that we don't often get to hear. We welcome the conversation and his perspective on today's very important episode. Before we dive in, I wanted to quickly ask, if you haven't done so already, if you would subscribe to our podcast and leave us a review. It really means a lot to us to see those five-star reviews on Apple Podcast. Our partner, Planning Center, offers a versatile suite of software tools designed to cater to your church's needs. It provides an organized system to manage information, coordinate events, facilitate communication with your team, and foster connections with your congregation. You can check them out at planningcenter.com. Okay, here we go with Darren Mulligan of We Are Messengers. Hey guys, it's Darren here from We Are Messengers. I'm a daddy of four children and a husband to my wife, Heidi. I sing in a rock and roll band that tries to engage culture in the hope of Jesus. Before I dive into this, I want to remind you that I have written this, I have prayed over it, I've taken time to study the Word, And as such, I will be reading this. So if it sounds slightly robotic, go easy on me. I'm not trying to be a more impressive man. I'm trying to give you an impressive view of the scriptures and Jesus. And so before we start, just to make it very clear, I am not a worship leader, nor am I called to be, nor do I have any desire to do so. My role is that of a songwriter and performer who engages all of culture in the hope that messy, broken humans may be attracted towards walking with Jesus while entertaining an audience with lyric and melody that is biblically cohesive. Uh, Like I said, I think the local church is the hope of the world. Jesus is the head of that church and all the universe, history and life find its focal point and meaning in the finished perfect work of the resurrected Christ. I have been involved in worship teams and I'm committed to my local church and the broader church in general with many years of dialogue and study informing my views on worship and its function and role within the church. So I believe that songs and singing within the body are important as outlined in Ephesians 5, 18 to 19, where we are told to not get drunk with wine for that is debauchery, but be filled with the spirit addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. And one little side note on that, it's interesting in those verses that before we start talking about singing, the Lord commands us, uh, do not get drunk with wine for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. Sometimes we manage to disconnect songs and singing and melody and lyrics from the reality of living a disciplined and obedient life. Uh, So yeah, that's a little side note. In any case, the title for today's little devotion is the rather uncatchy, a duty to care for worship leaders and a gentle reminder, warning to the church. So it's becoming increasingly obvious that we have made the worship leading role a coveted position at times, and certainly a position that feels different than it probably should in the church in regards to other service roles within the body. Quite often the church before service is bright and there is a communal feel, but as the music starts, the house lights go down and the stage lights are focused on the worship leader who is typically standing high on some kind of platform while being the focal point of a considerable portion of the Sunday morning service. We have made a distinction between that person, the worship team, and the members of the body already even in this subtle way. There is an importance implied to this role, whether intentionally 
or not. Now, please remember I'm not an expert. I'm a sinner and a hypocrite saved by grace. And I do not have a complete theology of the role of a worship leader. But I do have some insights I think could be helpful in reminding us to have a biblically informed view of what worship in the contemporary church should be. So firstly, let's remember what worship truly is as defined by the scripture. Worship is your whole life, not just a song or a melody. So Romans 12:1, I appeal to you therefore, brothers, by the mercy of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your spiritual worship. So leading people in the praises of the Lord at its best and most pure is foot washing, a gentle, humble, lowly in heart pouring out of the talent that God has given us so that the church can be edified and God be made much of. That's the kind of worship that's pleasing to God, not self-promotion, and using worship music as a path towards the accumulation of excessive wealth, status, power, or the fawning adoration of an audience. More from Darren in a minute. I've observed a strange and unbiblical obsession with those in worship music, particularly among mega churches or large worship movements and personalities, which are more often known for their style of their music than their heart for the poor, the needy, and the outsider. And these so-called movements rely heavily on the music to carry their brand as they seek wider influence and as such greater wealth and prestige. This is troubling. The gospel is not supposed to be glamorous, and we are to boast only in the finished work of Jesus. Now again, I have to step in here and speak about myself. Remember, sinner, hypocrite, follower of Jesus. I will say that my role, I see it as being different. I recognize that my band, I'm an entertainer. So I'm a rock and roll singer in a rock and roll band. My life is focused on the goodness of Jesus. When people buy a ticket to a We Are Messengers show, they're paying for productions, light, sound, a team of men, their families, talents, skill sets, knowing that they are going to be entertained. Now, rock and roll is expensive. Jesus is always free. We make it very clear we're not leading anybody into any throne room. You gotta go there all by yourself through the finished work of Jesus. Not a worship leader, not today, not tomorrow, not ever, unless the Lord calls me. Okay, back to what I was saying. So I should add at this point that for the majority of people serving in worship teams in a voluntary and even a paid capacity throughout the world, they're doing it in a really beautiful, Jesus-centered, serving, tender, humble capacity. This is certainly no rebuke of the ordinary, everyday, hardworking, decent worship team uh, in the church throughout the world. But it's definitely a warning to not fall into the trap of modern celebrity church culture, where worship leaders seem to have taken on some kind of priestly role, which simply does not exist under the new covenant. We have a duty of care to use biblically informed language around worship leading. Remember this, we do not usher in the presence of God. God doesn't need us to invite Holy Spirit into the room, nor do we lead people into the temple or throne room. God's presence is everywhere. There is no temple as God tabernacles with us, Christ in us, the hope of glory. There is no altar and no sacrifice needed. Christ is the great high priest for those of us who have repented and cast our lives on the mercy of God. Holy Spirit dwells in us and every man must go to the throne room of heaven all by himself through the finished work of Jesus. Worship leader, you don't need to create an altar. That's been done away with. The sacrifice has been paid and Jesus has taken it all. He is the propitiation for all of our sins. No more sacrifices needed on altars. What we need to do is to invite people to a table where they can sing to and for the God of the Bible, not one of our imaginations. For too long, we've made Levitical priests and celebrities out of worship singers and made singing the primary method of a sacrifice of praise as mentioned in Hebrews 13, 15 and 16. 
at the expense of everything else the book of Hebrews and the New Testament calls us to. We must remember that Jesus is the great and final high priest and establishes each of us as a royal priesthood of believers. No one can do something more than anyone else to get close to God. Singing psalms and spiritual hymns is a communal edification of the church and love offering to our God, nothing more. I think it's a much more pure and costly act of worship to take care of widows and orphans, to love the marginalized and the least than it is to sing. Finally, for me and you, please take stock of why we do what we do. What are the motivations? What drives us to sing? And what areas of our ministry and lives have been corrupted? And where have we compromised? Please take care to sing biblically accurate and cohesive songs so that we do not further inhibit the spiritual growth of our people who already operate in a pretty biblically illiterate Christian culture. I would also encourage your singing to be just one of the many ways that you serve the body, not the only one. And finally, remember this. The call of the believer is to lose your life and find it in Jesus. The call of the Christian is to wash others' feet. If what you are doing is not washing the feet of the body of the believers and calling the unbelievers to holiness and righteousness in God, then all you are doing is serving yourself. And that is a dangerous road to be on. And uh, finally, my second finally, to those already engaging in the local church, thank you. Thank you for leading songs that matter. Thank you for edifying the body. Thank you for inspiring my children to sing songs that remind them of the character of God and the promises of God. Thank you for serving. Thank you for the time you give. Thank you for the sacrifices you make. It is not unseen. So to all you doing this for the right reasons, with the right heart, please continue. We need you. And for those of you who do it simply to profit, for adoration, for success, for some lousy cheap posts on social media, please reconsider why you do what you do. Run to the scripture and make sure what you're doing lines up with what God would desire for each of us. May it be so, in Jesus' name, amen. We extend our heartfelt thanks to Darren Mulligan for sharing his genuine reflections on the church and the role of worship leaders. This episode is sure to cause a lot of conversation within our community. We welcome those conversations in the comments on our social channels or over on worshipleader.com. We often turn those comments into articles and use the information we find on social media as data to report on what's happening in worship. So please engage on social media and let us know what you think. One of my favorite songs off of Darren's new album, Where the Joy Is, is called Keep Your Head Up. We've included a video in the show notes on worshipleader.com, so be sure you check that out. All right, until next time, I want to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership. If you go to lifeaudio.com, you'll find a collection of Faith Center podcasts about health and wellness, parenting, current cultural events, Bible teachings, and more. So check them out at lifeaudio.com. I'm Joshua Swanson. Thanks for listening. Life Audio.